So I'm joined today by Jennifer Fujolkowski from AIM Corporation. Nice to see you again, Jennifer. Hi, thanks for having me. Yeah. Now, you were on earlier, actually, one of our um, panel discussions on, on low temperature sol solders. Uh, I want to talk a little bit longer about the LTS process and, and in particular about the rework process. I mean, um, it seems to be been ignored largely that this business of having uh, BGAs that are using SAC 305 balls uh, when you're working with a, a low temperature um, solder for the rest of the board. Uh, so how do, you, how do you make that work, you know? Okay. So I completely agree that rework is overlooked in the implementation of low temperature solders. Mm. Everyone looks at alloy commingling in the uh, reflow setting, they look at mechanical reliability, but what happens when these uh, this low temperature solder inevitably needs unplanned uh, rework when mm. defects occur. Uh, so in that case, most people you know, use flux cord wire for their rework and the material that they're often using is SAC 305 because that's just what's most likely on their rework bench. Yeah. And People think that's what we have available to us, and they don't really think about the uh, the consequences of using introducing this new material. Mm -hmm. um, so it's similar to how when BGAs are that are uh, pre bumped with SAC 305 are used with low temperature solder paste. It's a similar but different phenomenon when you're using a SAC 305 flux cord wire uh, and reworking a low temperature solder joint. Right. Um, so, uh, actually, tomorrow morning, I'll be presenting some work uh, uh, that's called Addressing uh, Low Temperature Rework Considerations. Mm -hmm. um, and that's because, like we said, this is something that isn't being, look <clears throat> excuse me, isn't being looked at as, as often. Right. Um, but there is evidence to believe that using entirely a low temperature alloy in your assembly, namely in the reflow process, will enhance your reliability. So we're looking at how using all low temperature solders can affect your reliability <clears throat> in the right. rework setting. Right, okay. So let's look at what are, are some of the consequences of, of trying to rework using SAC 305. What, what can go wrong with it? I mean, what are the typical problems <clears throat> you run into? Well, namely, well, one of the, instead of focusing on the consequences of SAC 305, I can talk a bit more about the advantages of using a low temperature alloy in the rework setting. Mm -hmm. So first of all, because it melts at a lower temperature, you can potentially reduce the uh, temperature of your soldering iron tip. Mm -hmm. So if you're, if part of the reason that you're using the low temperature solder is to reduce the thermal stress that you're putting on your assembly, mm -hmm. by reducing the iron tip, you're reducing the amount of uh, heat that's being introduced to all the components around where you're reworking. Mm -hmm. So that's one reason to use the low temp in the first place. Right. And um, also by using a um, SAC 305 flux cord wire, you're just introducing a, a, a new material to your assembly and um, that can just increase variability and from the work that's being done with the SAC 305 um, balls on BGAs used with um, low temperature paste, there has been evidence to believe that it reduces your reliability, so. Well, you're not, get, you're not gonna get full ball collapse, are you? Mm -hmm. on, on, on these um, uh, SAC 305 balls. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, because you're, you're only, you know, re you're reflowing the, the board at, you know, anything between 180 and and 220, um, so you're not getting full ball collapse. Yeah, um, which exactly. Is an issue. Uh, so, okay. So um, it also makes, I assume, you know, if you're using uh, low temperature uh, sort of balls as well as uh, you know low temperature sort of for the for the, the, the process, then you're getting a, a homogeneous um, uh, joint throughout. You know, mm -hmm. basically. So that that's gonna that's gonna help matters. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And in the rework setting, when you're just using a, a full, like using one alloy, you're mm. going to um, introduce less variability. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so do you think there, there needs to be some sort of um, standard that comes out, you know, to, to, to help guide people to, towards using at least the same alloy? <laughs> yeah. Well, I think that just more research needs to be done before we start forcing people to do one thing or another. Right. Right. Um, and I think that the study that we're, that we're starting and presenting tomorrow mm -hmm. um, kind of touches the tip of the iceberg on the whole, um, whether or not you should implement all low temperature in every sing single step of your process. Right. And um, in the study, we go through what um, what fluxes you can use to help using low temperature um, mm -hmm. alloys in the rework setting because bismuth is um, infamously a, a, low, a slow wetting alloy yeah. or when it's used in an alloy. Yeah. So there's different fluxes you can use to um, improve, let's say, like barrel fill 
And um, so what our study is trying to do is just to guide our users for best practices, mm -hmm. um, as opposed to you know, telling them that they need to do this or that, but to give them some support so when they're implementing these low temperature pace, they then know how to process the, their assembly further down the line and in the event of an unplanned defect. Right, right, right. Now, you know, I think you mentioned back in the panel discussion that, that when you're looking at um, using uh, tin bismuth alloys, uh, one way of being able to improve the ductility is using silver in the process. Mm -hmm. Some other companies are using dopants and things like that. Uh, how effective are, the, are these? So silver is an extremely effective um, element to use to improve characteristics such as wetting or to uh, reduce the brittleness or increase ductility. Mm -hmm. um, just 1% is, is a, a good option because then it keeps it at that just about eutectic uh, melting temperature of 138. Mm -hmm. So it's still low, uh, like a low melting alloy. Um, mm -hmm. And it just being 1% silver also makes it so that it's not extremely expensive, but still enhances those uh, mechanical characteristics that people are so concerned about when right. you introduce a high bismuth alloy to your assembly. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay, good. So um, any other things, tips you can give us about the, the presentation you're gonna make tomorrow? So, um, Tomorrow we're looking at three different rework conditions. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the conditions we excluded from the study was uh, low temperature flux cord wire. And the reason that that is, is as we're saying, you know, brittle uh, bismuth is this brittle element. Mm. And uh, that not only affects the assembly of your electronic device, but it also affects the uh, manufacturability of flux cord wires because flux cord wire is essentially a long metal tube with flux injected, injected. into the middle. Yeah. and uh, flux cord wire, the extrusion process process is continuous. Mm -hmm. And so um, it's kind of like when you pull silly putty like, and then you string it across your fingers, that's what the extrusion process, process is similar to. But since it's ductile, you have to, or not ductile, you have to move the extrusion process very slowly. Right. So if the reason you're switching to a low temperature solder paste is to minimize costs, mm. um, implementing a low temperature flux cord wire might not be the best idea for you because it's a bit cost prohibitive uh, because the process of creating this material takes it's so slow long. slow and more expensive. Yeah, you know, so. You know. um, but then, the, but using silver is going to be expensive too. Well, th you would have to introduce a lot of silver in mm. order for the extrusion process to be fast faster and equal to that of like SAC 305. Right. So tomorrow we're actually looking at solid low temp wire and external fluxes such as gel flux for SMT components mm -hmm. and liquid flux for through hole components. And we're also looking at the traditional SAC 305 flux cord wire. So yeah, if you'd like to learn more about how <laughs> low temperature paste can be reworked, there I'll be go. presenting tomorrow morning. Great, well, make sure and uh See, if you're if you're here at the show or you're in the area, make sure and join us uh, or join Jennifer tomorrow for that presentation. Which what what time are you presenting? It's the eight to ten a.m. Uh, time slot, LTS three, and mm -hmm. I'm the third one. So maybe around nine o'clock. There you go. Okay, great. <laughs> well, Jennifer, nice to, to to catch up with you today, and thank you for sharing all your your wealth of knowledge on LTS. Thanks, Trevor. Okay. Norton Electronic Solutions. Everything you need for precision automated fluid dispensing, conformal coating, plasma surface treatment and selective soldering. Our passion is helping customers take their processes further, faster with best in class technologies, dedicated global sales and support teams and unmatched applications expertise. From the names you respect, Assam Tech Fluid Dispensing and Conformal Coating, March Plasma Treatment and Select for Selective Soldering. We offer years of experience in advanced technology solutions for electronics manufacturing. Take your electronics assembly process further, faster.